is the internet a cesspool? <laughs> it seems to be. I, I seem to see it getting worse. But it's certainly with regard to film journalists, because it's like, oh, that film's terrible. Why? I've seen a still image from it. It's going to be awful. And there are a lot more vicious online. Yeah. That they used um, to be. It's an interesting question, because I do have a uh, qualification in media studies and documentaries, and I have worked as a, a journalist way back in the day. Um, you know, and my, my daughter actually worked as a journalist briefly, and she got so disgusted with, with the the journalistic situation that she quit. Um, so as a qualified answer, it's all about money. Journalism has always been about money, but not to the degree that it's at now. And uh, uh, it's it's horrifying what people are doing. I, I can actually say, and I've often thought about doing a little documentary, a journalist once cost me uh, by reporting incorrectly, it's cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars personally, uh, just to get a nice little bit of clickbaiting. So that their journalism gone gone astray is it's definitely a problem. And you've got to step back and think, okay, as humanity, what are we doing? What's our future? You know, let's get this side riled up and this side riled up. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, you know, like, for example, both sides of the presidential election or the, the UK, um, uh, you know, ministers, yeah. you know, in each party, they all sit, hang out together and drink and have a good laugh, even though they were yelling at each other across the room in the House of Commons, yeah. uh, you know, 10 minutes before. So it's the media is forcibly manipulating us to take sides in everything and to be outraged and to click on that thing. And, um, you know, what is the point? I get they need to make money, but surely there's a better method. But surely there's a point where you can do something uh, in a better way. And I mean, it takes a little bit of intelligence, but you think about it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I know people have been employed by the Daily Mail and they just have to copy and paste, put it out, copy, paste, put it out, copy. They copy yeah. other, other people's articles, twist it a bit, add a few photos that maybe make people outraged and put it out. The people who win in that scenario are the people who own the media company, and that's it. Uh, the journalists got paid, uh, but they don't think and they don't care, and they've kind of given up their life and soul. They probably start out as a journalist wanting to do good, and uh, they've got stuck in this situation. And I'm probably also equally um, uh, guilty because, you know, made uh, hundreds of I, I counted once, it was nearly a thousand documentaries I, I made. Now, that being said, you know, when you do a TV, when you're directing a TV show and you're in charge of uh, doing four to five mini documentaries every day, that, or, you know, specialized news stories, which will, they're not about news, you know, standalone little documentaries on animals or something, you know, then I counted it and it was a, th a thousand different topic documentaries in my career. Um, but they're all about seven minutes long, you know, full length yeah. documentaries, probably 20. So it's, um, you know, you have the, uh, I would say the first day of, of film school in documentary class studies or media studies, they said, every documentary you see is a lie to some yeah. level, yeah. to some extent. And they cited some of the earliest documentaries ever made were basically propaganda pieces by the shell company or, yeah. you know, whoever. And we watched them and, and, you know, in the 80s, it was like, wow, that's so that's a ridiculous documentary. How do people buy this about, you know, <laughs> anything but back, you know, it was basic, basic propaganda. So I, I don't think there's, you know, that the system is, is at fault. Can you make an unbiased documentary completely down the middle telling the straight story? It's it's been considered almost impossible. I did. My Comic-Con one is. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, because that, no, that has no but, agenda or anything in it. It was No, but think about this. Even your choice of where you point the camera. Yeah. You know, say say for example, right behind you there was a girl, you know, in a in a little um uh you know, cosplaying outfit whose boyfriend was holding a gun to her. You know, there's a situation, a story you missed completely, you know, the dark side of Comic Con, for example, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the, 
even with your documentary, you're biased by um, following people, maybe people you knew, for example, like me, you know, so you were tending towards that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. There's always a slight bias and yeah. then presenting me as, as a nice guy, which is very kind, you know, but there's always a bias somewhere because you know somebody or you don't know somebody and you, you know, it, it's what you did was called a, a fly in the wall documentary. Yeah. Which is the purest form of, you know, trying to show reality. And that's always the point. Um, and I, I've done a couple of fly in the wall documentaries, but I faked it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It's also called reality <laughs> television in the nineties yeah. before reality was a thing. So, you, you know, it's, we are always biased, but what you did was the closest to being as pure as possible. Probably 90, 98% pure, mm. perfect. But, but not 100. Selection. But not 100. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there's a pretty girl, or there's <laughs> a look at that alien giant creature over there. Boom, boom. You know, you, you get some of your bias just by observation. I and was I was rewatching it the other day. I had it on mute and I just had it playing because I'm helping some people increase their YouTube numbers. I thought, I'm just going to watch my thing again because I haven't watched it in years. So nostalgic, that thing. It's oh, Some of the stuff I'd shot and had experienced, I'd forgotten about. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. So it was a real nice trip down memory lane. It makes me want to go do more events because yeah. done, I've done some since I did that documentary, a couple of Grimfests and three more sci-fi whales. So there is footage that I could use to maybe do a second one, but I'm probably not going to finish a second one at San Diego Comic-Con again because that was very expensive. And, yeah, it is, isn't it? Travel is very expensive. You did get free whiskey, though. I did get free whiskey, yeah. Free whiskey, and I got some key rings from San Diego, and, you know, I got to meet a woman dressed as an Ewok and oh. stuff like that. So, oh, you know. That's interesting. There, There is... There is that, I suppose. But yeah, it just seems you go on go online and people are just they're just miserable nowadays. Certainly when it comes to movies. What's that like from a filmmaker? Because I, I was chatting with Fraser the other week and I said, you go back to something like 1984 where Ivan Reitman's going to release Ghostbusters and he's so excited. He's like, I can't wait for people to see it. This is going to be great. They're going to love it. And then you go now where a filmmaker is going, oh, Jesus, the internet is going to kill me. Do I have to release it? I, I, because they are they're very vengeful online mm. and it's quite sad it's like movies are for people who watch movies movies are entertainment we don't have any financial stake in them mm. uh obviously for a studio and a filmmaker you're like i really hope this thing makes money because i want to make more movies but for a viewer we're like if we watch a movie and it's good that's great if we watch it and it's not oh well next one will hopefully be better but some people get really angry at it and i don't quite understand that way of thinking. Well, it's funny. I was thinking about that today, and I, I kind of look upon it like a wrestling match. And this is today's wisdom. If you ever go to a live wrestling show, which I used to love, um, you get to yell at the baddies and cheer at the good, good, you know, the good guys. And it's nothing more fun than yelling, you know, fake abuse at, at the heel, <laughs> as they call them in the the wrestling world. Um, it's kind of fun, you know, it's it's kind of that level of entertainment. And I think that somehow translated my my worst reviewed movie has also made the most money. And my most, you know, beloved movies haven't made as much money. You know, there's a weird dichotomy there. And I was thinking about this morning because, you know, one of my films went up on um, YouTube and the torrent of abuse that has already been coming in is shocking you know i have to be on on the online literally one hour every hour erasing deleting erasing because it's yeah these are the, these are the nasty comments rather than uh, i didn't like the film comments because i've seen i've seen a few people i'm going to touch upon one of them which just made me laugh and it's like the person's comment just kind of negated the whole argument um yeah so there are still the i'm not a fan of this film type comments on there yeah but I, is there a like a percentage of just sheer abusive comments that come into a to a filmmaker. Uh yeah, it's it's it it really hurt me in the beginning, and uh, like anyone would, you know. So what's wrong with these people? But Eve, like you know, you you can I think about the abuse I got on my first film, for example, and yet that movie is still in print to this day. It has made somebody, not me personally, um, I would say half a million dollars. By the way, no, and not received any cent of mm. that. 
but it is still selling to this day in Germany and, uh, you know, on DVD. They're still making new versions of it. So um, obviously somebody likes it enough to want to, you know, watch it and keep selling it. And, you know, I, I look at the torrent of abuse I get online sometimes and I think, well, thank you for watching my movie and giving me one cent yes. for your time. Yeah. And though they say they want their their half an hour back, which is, you know. Yeah, I don't understand. So that, that was one of the like, comments I saw. Yeah. I'll it's never like, get those two hours back. So like, you don't get any two hours back for a film. You choose yeah. to watch it. If you don't like it, that's, you know. Yeah, you can turn it off at any time. <laughs> and exactly. That's fine. You know, you, you know, it's nobody's got a gun to your head. So I, I all I can say is, you know, those people who've helped, you know, promote the movie and, um, you know, watch the movie, they're still helping. You know, yeah, will I earn money from it on YouTube? Tiny money. Tiny, tiny little tiny, bit. Tiny yeah. money, but, but still thank you, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I've i learned not to listen to these people because when you meet them face to face, they change their tune. Yeah. And they really are sad humans if they feel the need to abuse you that much online, uh, that much. They're yeah. really sad humans. And, um, you know, you they can't you, – you can – you can go into their world and I have gone into the world of a couple of these people, you know, through, through a consequence saying, wow, that's, you know, this is your life. The sadness is not their, their hatred. It, the sadness is themselves, you know, they're lashing out because of their, their internal grief or whatever it is. And, you know, that's the reality of it. I so, just think it's sad that they can't just realize that not every film is going to be amazing. Not every film is going to change their life. Some films are like, I watched Escape Plan 2 and Escape Plan 3 in the past 24 hours because I'd seen the first one. I'd not seen two and three, and I thought, I'll watch them. They were both fine. Mm. They're not going to go in my top list of the year, but they were okay. They were fine. I don't get angry about either of them. And then if I watch something else, that will probably make me feel a bit better because it will be better than Escape Plan 2 or Escape Plan 3. Movies are supposed to be entertainment. 